Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Veltima Fungicide and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Corn School. Today we're going to talk spring. Um, how can growers better apply fungicides in crop to protect against foliar diseases and insects? To tackle that question, I'm joined by Jason DeVoe. He is the Ontario Ministry of Agriculture's Application Technology Specialist. We also know him as the Spray Guy, and he joins me now to discuss some really interesting application research he's just published. Hi, Jason. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Hi, Bern. Good to see you. Hey, now your research looks at the effectiveness of using drop hoses to apply fungicide and the return on investment for growers. Why test drop hoses? And, you know, what are you hoping to learn? Well, Bern, we know that crop management practices in corn can help with disease control, but it's pretty modest. Uh, So any strategy that would increase fungicide efficacy, that's important to take a look at. We even know that just timing alone with uh, labeled fungicides can suppress disease. It can reduce mycotoxins, which we're not looking for, obviously, but only by about 50%. So it was a simple enough question. We wondered if how we sprayed would have any significant impact. Now, tell us about the different drop hose technologies available and, and why you chose to test the beluga hose in your research. Well, I'll take a step back. In 2019, working with Albert Tenuta and Dave Hooker, we tested lots of methods of application. Uh, five different nozzle arrangements, helicopters, planes, and just recently a couple of drones. But we also tested the classic T-jet drop hoses, over-the-counter, pretty modest, and the very expensive and special yield center uh, 360 under covers. And they kicked butt. They, they, they improved coverage on water-sensitive paper, both in the amount of coverage they gave and how they distributed the spray. Uh, we also used copper and uh, copper is kind of a surrogate for active ingredient. Think of it as a residue test. And we saw a 50% increase from the yield center 360. So what that told us was spraying from inside the canopy was really effective and consistently effective in improving coverage. And we started looking a little closer at different ways to spray from inside the canopy. Um, We had the T-Jet, we had the undercovers, and along comes the Beluga. And this thing is out of Germany. It was originally designed to spray uh, neonicotinoids in canola. And just a few months before they released it, guess what Europe wasn't allowed to spray anymore? So finding a new role for this drop was important to them. And a lot of the design features were important to us. Mm. So that's why we looked a little more closely at the Beluga and efficacy trials. Yeah. Now tell us about how you set up the trials, you know, and the variables you needed to consider. Um, you know, they were actually done on farm at three locations in Ontario, right? That's right. The first thing you do is you find a courageous sucker, a, a grower, I'm sorry. And I picked on Dan Petker down in Port Rowan uh, in Ontario. He was really eager to give this a shot. So we had corn on 30-inch centers, and uh, we needed a, a grower that was willing to do an overhead, an overhead broadcast spray, like a standard overhead spray, leave checks, and use the belugas. And uh, Dan and his father were game. So we set up eight one-acre plots in the first year. This would have been, I think, 2021. We, uh, yeah, 2021 we did it. And we ran all season using uh, three different regimes. So the no-spray check, and we also did Meravis Neo and a combination of Headline Amp and Corumba. And we watched, you know, we did um, early investigations for disease. We did, we looked for Western bean cutworm. Uh, we did our um, checks for disease on leaves. We did our cob size checks, all the things a grower would do to make sure everything's working out. And the belugas were showing less evidence of disease. They were showing improved cob size. You know, we had our fingers crossed. Mm. Um, but when we harvested, things got a little different. Uh, I won't belabor the disease stuff, but I'll tell you this. Mycotoxins, which we tested for, not a great indicator of spray coverage. Sometimes we saw higher levels in the unsprayed checks. Sometimes the unsprayed checks won. So it was kind of a muddy story as far as disease was concerned. And uh, for all his greatness, Dan Petker can't grow Western bean cutworm to save his life. (laughs) So, you know, we, we put a little delegate in there and we ended up not talking about it. But... When we looked at the actual money in your pocket, the return on investment showed an advantage using the belugas versus any other method. 
So, Jason, I'm going to put up this slide. It looks at your net revenue um, sort of take on this trial. What did you learn here? Well, this is the culmination of two years of work, I should say. In the first year, we actually didn't see benefit in spraying fungicide at all, which was a bit of a surprise. But when you average the two years together, what we saw was using the directed application, the belugas, versus not spraying, profited the grower about 55 bucks an acre. Now, when you compare the directed, which is the belugas again, to broadcast, a standard method, the profit was 29 bucks an acre. And then the broadcast versus unsprayed check, a profit of 26 bucks an acre. So what this tells us is it was worth spraying fungicide and it was worth spraying with the beluga versus an overhead method. So what's happening with the beluga, Jason? Um, I mean, are you just getting, you know, that, that better coverage in the canopy down low? What's happening? You know, it's just simple physics, Burn. If you, you spray from overhead, that droplet's got to drop through the tassel, make its way through the leaves, hopefully land on the leaf, hopefully land on the silk. And the further you go down into corn that's eight feet high, the less and less spray you have available. But the drops put your nozzle inside the canopy and spray sideways. It's like a car wash in there. Mm. You simply can't miss. So as long as they track and don't deflect and the belugas don't seem to very much, you're hitting this corn from both sides. You can even use a smaller droplet size. Uh, you couldn't do that from overhead because a lot of it just blows off course or simply doesn't go anywhere. Mm. But inside the canopy, where it's only got a few inches to go, wonderful coverage, just smacks everything. And four years of water-sensitive paper and our uh, deposition work with copper show us that that's the truth. Hey, bottom line question for you. You know, what's the payback for growers on investing in an application system like that? You did some math. Yeah, we did. So uh, we did this specifically for Port Rowan since Dan did this two years in a row. We had the sale price, the custom spray cost, drying, input costs, everything you'd look at. And in 2021... 48 beluga drop hoses, and that's what you'd put on a 120-foot boom on 30-inch centers, cost about 9600 bucks. You add 192 nozzles to that, that gets you another 2000 or so. So the cost is about $11,500, which, you know, gives you pause. But you're already going to spend 720 on nozzles. When you do the math, compare uh, when you take the mean net revenue into account, these things pay for themselves in 370 acres. Well, wow. wow, that's a... That's some interesting research and, and uh, some great yeah. insights. Yes, some great insights. If you want to learn more about Jason's research, check out the full report at Sprayers 101. It is a great resource. Hey, Jason, thanks. Always appreciate you making some time for Real Agriculture. Thanks, Bernie. Good talking to you.